It's Tuesday morning, guys, and welcome to Pray First. Hi, guys. Hello, 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 hello. Come on up in here, up in here. Uh, we are doing this, you know, every day, Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. So glad that y'all join us each and every day. It's important uh, that we get together as followers of Christ and get in the Word and pray and put God first in our day before we touch our phones, before we read our texts, before we check social media, before we check our emails, and certainly before we turn on the television and watch the news, we are giving God the first part of our day. And all God's people said, uh, yep, yep, hashtag yep, yep, hashtag amen. If you would, if you're joining us live in the 7 o'clock hour, I like to get a you know an idea of how many people are here. So if you would, hashtag live. And let us know that you're joining us live. If you're watching us recorded, joined, uh, you know, any other time other than 7 a.m., would you just hashtag recorded? And probably the most important thing we do here is we share this out. So if you already have a share button, go ahead and hit share. I want to jump right into what I'm doing today because we're turning, um, we're turning a corner, and we're going to talk about a new um, topic for I don't know how long. And so this is a very interesting discussion we're about to start, and today is just the beginning. It's just the foundation. Uh, my people at Cross Point know that no sermon is complete until you've heard the one before it and the one after, because we do series. And so if you just get a little piece of it, you get something, but there's going to be more. So this is the foundation. This is part one. Uh, we're going to continue after this. Uh, if you would do one more favor, sort of housekeeping and, and, and most importantly, being hospitable to our guests here at Pray First, let them know that we are glad that they are here. Hit your hearts, hit your likes, just start going crazy and let them know we're so glad that they're here. And we're about to start a big time topic on angels and demons. It is important to know. Uh, this is not some uh, extracurricular. This is not some kind of woo. This is not uh, fiction. This is reality. And we're going to look at what does God's word say about the spirit realm that we cannot see. And more importantly for me, I want to tell you why it matters, okay? Hashtag it matters. You need to know about the spirit world. You need to know that there is something that is beyond what we see, uh, sometimes what we can feel, uh, you know, with our senses. There's something that is out there, and there is a reason we need to know that. Let's start with looking at freedom in Jesus Christ. You need to know that freedom can be found in Jesus Christ, but freedom is a spiritual implication. Freedom is a spiritual, say spiritual, hashtag. What is the first word in spiritual? It is spirit. It's pertaining to the spirit. And there are a lot of Christians who do not realize that Christians can be in bondage. So I want to look at Proverbs chapter 6, verse 31. Again, I want to tell you why it matters today, and it matters that you know about angels and demons. Proverbs 6, 31. <clears throat> That's not what I want to read to you. I want to read you. I want to start out somewhere else. I want to start out at John. I want to start out at John 8, 36. We'll go there next. How you like live broadcast? Amen. If you love live broadcast, give some hearts and give some lights. I thought I looked up every single verse. Okay, so here's John 8, 36, and this is what we want to start with. Therefore, if the Son, capital S-O-N, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Hashtag free. Hashtag indeed. Whom the Son makes. He has the power. He has the authority. He has the declarative truth. He who the Son makes, declares, has the authority to make free, you shall be free indeed. Say free indeed, everybody. Let's say that real loud. Free indeed. Hashtag free indeed. Satan, you know, the devil, Lucifer, 
was one of three of the most powerful angels known as archangels. Three of them. Let me tell you about them because I believe that they were over three sections of angels. Now, don't think of Lucifer as Satan yet. I want you to think about Lucifer before he fell from heaven or before he was, um, you know, ejected from heaven, I guess I should say. Lucifer was an angel. He was beautiful in all his ways. Three archangels covered three sections of angels. Let me give you their names and what they did real quickly. There was Gabriel, who was a messenger angel. Remember, Gabriel comes to Mary and brings the news about the Christ. He comes to proclaim him to the shepherds. Gabriel was a messaging angel. There is Michael. He is a warring angel. If you study Michael, you will find that God sends him to, to execute his vengeance. Michael is a warring angel. And then there was Lucifer, who was a musical angel, who led the worship of heaven. Now, I want to get that inside of you real quick. But then he tried to exalt himself above God, and thus God ejected him from heaven. Satan cannot stand, John 8, 36, that whom the Son sets free from the oppression of the fallen false god Lucifer, who wants people to worship him and bow down to him. Even Lucifer, when he talked to Jesus, uh, in the, uh, the temptations of Christ, he told Jesus, I will give you everything that you see, in other words, proclaiming his lordship over all, if you will express your love to me. He says, I'm the, I'm, don't forget who I am. I'm the worship leader of heaven, Jesus. You're going to bow down to me. You're not going to tell me anything. You're not going to believe in me. You're going to, you're going to proskuneo. You're going to express your worship to me. And Satan cannot stand that the Son of God would not bow, would not express, would not worship, and then took all authority, the keys of death, hell, and the grave, fear, oppression uh, from him, and now he is setting people free from his grip, from his power, from his circle of influence, Satan can't stand getting caught as he oppresses people. And I want you to know that Satan and Lucifer and the fallen angels with him oppress people today. This is not an Old Testament thing. This is a, this is a reality that there are spirits around us. And he can't stand getting caught because Proverbs 6.31 tells us, when a thief gets caught, hashtag thief, Lucifer's a thief. Come on, hashtag thief. When a thief gets caught, that thief must restore what's been stolen sevenfold. Woo, that's good stuff. That's not Doug stuff. That's Listen, when the thief gets caught in your life, he is required by the principles of God to restore what he's stolen from you, not in accordance to what he took, but he's required to give you back sevenfold. I hope you're getting this. Most believers, however, do not feel free indeed. Most believers, however, do not know they can be free indeed because most believers don't know they can be in bondage. Hashtag believers can be in bondage. John chapter 8, when he says, Him who the Son has set free is free indeed. He's speaking to Jews who had become believers, who had become followers. He's not speaking to lost people. He's saying, you who are believers are in bondage, and the Son can set you free. So let me answer this question first. Is it possible for a Christian to be in bondage? Mark chapter 5. This is a big deal, so I'm going to read the whole thing, okay? Verse 1 through 20. Then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gadareans. And when he had come out of the boat, Jesus, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, another way of saying a demon, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no one could bind him, not even with chains, because he had often been bound with shackles and chains. And the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broken into pieces. Neither could anyone tame him. 
and always, night and day, look, he's being tormented by the Spirit, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. When Jesus saw him from afar, the man ran and worshiped him. He bowed down to him. He proskuneoed him. I want you to know this shook up the demons inside of him when this man sees Jesus and he goes and bows down to him because this man's full of demons. Listen, he cried out with a loud voice and this is not the man now crying out. This is the demon crying out. He cried out with a loud voice, what have I to do with you, Jesus, the son of the most high God? Jesus hadn't said a word, but the demons remembered who he was. They knew who he was the moment they laid eyes on him. He cried out, What have I to do with you, Jesus, the Son of the Most High God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. I mean, the demons are calling on God to rescue them from Jesus. Isn't that something? For he said to them, Come out, unclean spirit. And then Jesus asks the demon, What is your name? And the demon answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. Somewhere in the neighborhood of a legion, as far as a Greek, uh, a Roman garrison or an army, was in the neighborhood of 5,000. So this guy didn't have one demon. This guy had thousands of demons. And the spokesperson said, We are many. I, we are legion, for we are many. Also, he begged the demon, the spokesperson begged, him earnestly that he would not send him out of the country because demons do not like to leave where they have strongholds. Verse 11, now a large herd of swine was feeding in the nearby mountains, very large. So all the demons begged him. So now they're all screaming and begging from inside of this man, send us into the swine that we may enter them into the pigs. And at once Jesus gave them permission. Then the unclean spirits went out and entered the swine and there were about 2,000 of them. So there was at least 2,000 demons in this legion scenario. And the herd ran violently down the steep place into the sea and drowned in the sea. So those who fed the swine fled and they told everyone in the city and the country and they went out to see what had happened. Can you imagine 2,000 pigs floating in the water? Then they came to Jesus and saw the one who'd been demon-possessed with legion sitting clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. He who, he who the Son sets free, John eight thirty six is free indeed. Uh, in his right mind, and they wondered, and they were afraid, and, and they wondered what had happened, and he told them what had happened to him, that he had been demon-possessed, and he told them about the swine, and they began to plead with him. They're telling this, Jesus, they're telling, would you please leave the country because this is too spooky for us. Verse 18, and when he got into the boat, he who had been demon-possessed begged Jesus that he might go with him. However, however, Jesus did not permit him, but said to him, go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he has had compassion on you. And he departed and began to proclaim in Decapolis all that Jesus, he began to proclaim in Decapolis all that Jesus had done for him and many, many marveled. I need you to know something today. Decapolis is not a city. A Decapolis is 10 cities. Deca, 10. Opolis, like metropolis or city, 10 cities. A Philadelphia, not Pennsylvania, but Philadelphia, Damascus, you know, the road to Damascus. Uh, these were two of the cities that were part of the 10 cities of Decapolis. Now, let me read you a couple of more things in just a minute. But it's important to understand point number one so that we can build on this foundation for the rest of the week. Now, I want to answer this question. Number one, are there really demons? Uh, yes. There, number one, point number one, there really are demons. There really are evil spirits. There really are righteous spirits. There really are angels and there really are demons. Demons are mentioned 82 times in the, in the New King James Version, 80 times in other versions. It's just a, a difference of terminology. 82 times demons are referred to in the New King James Version. 61 times Jesus speaks about demons specifically in the Gospels. 
And probably not much was spoken before the Gospels because no one had the authority over the demons. Jesus was the first one to start calling them out. Jesus was the first one to start setting people free. He, he, he whom the Son sets free is what? Hashtag free indeed. Let me try to get through this part real quickly. Remember there was three sections of angels. A third of the angels fell with Lucifer. One third of the angels fell with with Lucifer. One third, because remember, there's three archangel sections, Michael, Gabriel, Lucifer. You're saying, that's a lot of demons. You're right. That is a lot of demons. But how about let's look at it with a different perspective. Two thirds of the demons didn't fall. We've got the demons two to one, amen? And forget the angels two to one. We've got the Son of God. The Son of God that calls demons to beg to be cast into swine. We not only have them two to one, no matter how tough they are, we have the power of the name of Jesus Christ. Now, let me tell you why this is so important to you before I close for today and pick it back up tomorrow. It's important for you today because you and I are fighting the wrong battles and we're using the wrong weapons. Come here, come here, come here. We are fighting the wrong battles and we're using the wrong weapons. You and I are trying to gain victory over our friends, our family, our relatives, ourselves by lashing out at one another. We are arguing with brothers and sisters in Christ. We are fighting with our spouses. We are ready to throw our hands up with our children. We are fighting the wrong people and we're using the wrong weapons. The Word of God says that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against powers of darkness in high places. We are fighting the wrong people, and we are using the wrong weapons. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. In other words, they are not physical. They are not fought with our fist or with our tongue. They are not fought with our wit or with our anger or our bitterness or our unforgiveness. But those are the things we're using. We are using our emotions to lash out at people. We're using the wrong weapons to fight the wrong war. We're not supposed to be fighting each other. There is a spiritual war going on that we need to put on the armor of God. And if you don't know about the armor of God, you need to go back on my page, learn about the armor of God, or get in the Word and say, hey, what's the armor of God? And find out what the armor of God is and put it on because we are fighting the wrong people with the wrong weapons and wondering why we're not free indeed. We're only set free indeed when we get on our knees and pray in the power of Jesus' name. It is in the name of Jesus that every knee bows. It's in the name of Jesus that every demon flees. It's in the name of Jesus that you have victory. You can speak the name of Jesus over your family, your friends, your situations, your problems, your efforts, your hurts, your pains, your memories. You can speak in the power of the name of Jesus and Jesus breaks every chain. Ask this demoniac in the tombs and in the mountains, what breaks every chain? The power of Jesus breaks every chain and you can speak to it with the power of the name of Jesus. Don't be afraid of demons. This is not something to go, oh, I'm so scared. Ah, ah. The name of Jesus is powerful. There is power in the name of the Lord. There is healing in the name of the Lord. There is, there is, you have the power to be set free and set your friends and family free in the power of Jesus' name. I want to preach on this. I'm supposed to be teaching on this. Demons are simply disembodied spirits and they're looking for a body and yours is not available, okay? Yours is not available. We see that they are disembodied spirits that entered into a man. They're disembodied spirits that entered into a pig which tells me that demons can inhabit animals. I think cats are an excellent example of that. Amen. I got, you know, you know what I'm saying. Anyway, I need to wrap this up for today. I've got a lot more verses to read. I just don't have time to do it. But we do this every single day, so we'll be back tomorrow. Again, yes, there really are demons. Yes, their assignment is to kill, steal, and destroy from you. Yes, the name of Jesus is more powerful. Yes, we're fighting the wrong war with the wrong weapons. 
but we're going to get this right. And all God's people said, hashtag amen. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everybody out there, Lord, that they wouldn't get on a witch hunt and start going around the house looking for demon-possessed cats or demon-possessed spouses. But God, that we would recognize that there is a spiritual warfare going on in the heavenlies around us, and it does involve ourselves. We need to today to plead the blood of Jesus over ourselves, and I plead the blood of Jesus over everyone watching. There's nothing to be afraid of, but there is something that we must be aware of, and that is the right war with the right weapons in the name of Jesus. And all God's people said, amen. I got to get out of here. Be back tomorrow. Uh, we're going to be diving super deep into angels and demons, so don't miss a single episode and share this out right now. Bye, guys. I love y'all.